This is the new BMW i4. In fact, it's the M50 version. It is the first ever electric car worked on by BMW's M division. And in this video, I'm going to review it by driving it from here, Munich Airport, all the way to the Bavarian Mountains. Yeah. So it's a distance of about 200 kilometers, but this car has a range of 500 kilometers. However, I think I'm going to take it by the Autobahn and max it out and see what doing that does to the range. Also I'm going to launch the car to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour. See if it's quicker than my BMW M3. It could be. Also after the journey I'm going to launch it again to see if using the battery actually reduces the performance. Anyway I'm Matt Watson and you're watching CarWow. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Okay, now I'm leaving the airport of Munchens and I've got 99% of the battery. I've reset the trick computer and we have a claimed range of 377 kilometers, which isn't quite the 500 I was hoping for. That's obviously calculated based on how people have been driving this car and that's motoring journalists for you. Anyway, V Gates. All right. Auf Zane. Enjoy your day. Yeah. Bye. Bye. That was awkward. Anyway, let's, um, let's launch it. See if we can get that expected range down even further. <laughs> right, I found an open stretch of road, so I'm gonna launch this car. I'm gonna put it into sport boost mode, which gives me full 544 horsepower and 795 newton meters of torque. This thing's supposed to do 0 to 60 in 3.9 seconds. However, can it go quicker than the best time I've had out of a BMW N3 launching, which is 3.6 seconds? Here we go. What will the specialist timing gear say? <laughs> <laughs> 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds so exactly the same as the m3 wow that is impressive now i launched the car with the battery charge over 90 percent then you get full power once it goes below 90 percent the amount of power you get slowly starts to reduce i'm actually going to do another launch later on in the video when i've got a lot less battery charge remaining to see how that affects the performance now we're on the autobahn it's de-restricted i've got 84 percent of battery we've done 48.7 kilometers 330 kilometers of range. Let's reduce that now. So top speed of this car, 225 kilometers an hour, which is 140 miles an hour. Weird restriction on that. Other BMW cars are 155 miles an hour, 250 kilometers an hour, but there we go. Cruising along at 150. I haven't gone too far and my charge level is decreasing rather quickly. It's a little bit rainy, so I don't want to do sustained high speed really. I just don't feel comfortable. Still, I'll tell you what you notice, zooming along the autobahn at high speed in an electric car, just how quiet it is. In fact, it's so quiet, I'm really noticing the rain hitting the windscreen. That's the only sound I'm getting, really, and the noise of the trucks that I'm overtaking. Right, that's the de-restriction section over. Show me how to do it in the wet. I'm sure there's more to come later. I think I'll just put the cruise control on. The auto steering, yes, it's auto steering. Is he gonna recognize the reduced speed limit? Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, that's good. It just sent me to the new lower speed limit, which is obviously for this tunnel. In fact, this is that thing that everyone does in a tunnel. Let's roll down the window and accelerate. <laughs> Looks like that's one thing we won't all be doing in future once petrol cars are banned. <laughs> There's no point in an electric car unless you want to hear slightly more tyre noise. Oh my God, what is that smell? We shouldn't put the window down now. It's like we've just driven through a load of cow s***. Love an Bavaria. Let's talk about the design. So I quite like the front of this car. I'm getting used to BMW's kidney grills and they look quite good blanked in because obviously you don't need engine cooling and they house the sensors as well. Not sure about this though. They stuck on M badge. It looks like someone with some basic diesel BMW have found an M badge on someone else's car and stuck it on their car to pretend that they've got the performance model. I don't know why they've done that. It just looks a bit odd. This being the M50 has a sportier lower bumper than the standard i4. Moving down the sides, you start off with seven, To whom the bell tolls. Anyway, you start off with 17 inch alloy wheels. Thankfully, these are the top of the range 20s. You're gonna need 20s. Once again, M50 model gets blue sporty brake calipers. Got an air breather here, it's not fake. Another M badge, though this doesn't look fake. The M50 also gets fistable M style door mirrors. Sorry about that. Side skirts on this M50 model to make it look more sporty. I'm liking. The flush door handles, they're nice. And the swooping roof line, that kind of coupe design. Looks cool, but what does it do for practicality? We'll find out later. I quite like the back of this. 
You've got sculptured tail lights, a little bit of a bootlet spoiler. Rather than having fake exhaust pipes on this M50 version, you have a diffuser. I'm not sure if that's fake. It's a bit odd, though weirdly, I kind of like the look of the rear of this car. In terms of pricing, the i4 starts from £52,000. The M50 though, that starts from £64,000. Now, if you want to make sure you're paying a fair price for your next new car, click on the pop-out banner up there to go to CarWow or follow the link in the description. You can also sell your car through CarWow now. We'll make sure you get a fair price for that as well. Alternative, if you want to do that after the video, simply Google, help me CarWow. And my team and I will sort you out. So we've done 110 kilometers and we've got 65% battery remaining. We've come off the Autobahn, but we'll be rejoining it again shortly. But I want to show you something first. It's the acceleration that you get from this car. It's as brutal as I've felt in any electric car. I'm going to illustrate it with Jack. So just relax, Jack. Ready? Now I'm going to floor it and shock Jack. Actually, before I do that, let's put it into Sport Boost. Ready? No, just relax, actually. Don't be ready. Don't be ready. We're not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> What's that like? Uh, it's okay <laughs> when I'm expecting it. <laughs> but not so much. Okay, so I actually think that it's probably not worth us doing it anymore. I'm going to show people now the Hans Zimmer noises, so this is really interesting. So what I'm going to do is put the car into... You knew that was coming, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, damn it. Anyway, you might be able to hear this. I've got what's known as iconic sounds set on this car. So you've got this weird noise when you accelerate and decelerate, which has been created by Hans Zimmer. And it's different depending on if you're in sports mode or comfort mode. So this is it in sports mode. And then when you brake it. What do you think of that, Jack? It sounds happy and then sad. Okay, we're gonna put it into comfort mode. the same but quieter right happy then sad happy then sad it's almost like he's just blowing down some kind of tube and he's just changed the length of the tube for comfort compared to sport and if you have it in eco pro mode silent does that mean that the noise actually uses energy maybe insightful <laughs> right let's get back on the autobahn <laughs> thanks for your help here jack it's been really really useful <laughs> if you're wondering why i'm now sat in the back of the car it's because i made jack feel sick with all this sudden accelerating so he said the only way to get over that was to drive so i let him drive and i'm taking the opportunity to see what this car is like in the back seats so knee room is okay and jack's quite a tall guy he's over six foot headroom in the back is okay for me because i'm under six foot but i think a taller person might struggle a little bit it's because the car's got a sloping roof line one thing that's interesting about this is that unlike something like a tesla model 3 it's not based on a pure ev platform it shares its underpinnings with the 3 series and as a result you have this lump in the floor there which is designed for a, a prop shaft and all exhaust and stuff like that which you get with an internal combustion engine car so you don't have a flat floor which means that if i uh, if you can do it while he's driving sit in the middle seat I have to go legs akimbo, darling. Yeah. So it's not so comfy carrying three in the back, probably, as a Tesla Model 3. Well, I can't fault those. This, look. You have through loading there. It's good. And then you have an armrest here, and BMW do bother to cover up the cup holders so you don't put your arm in them when you're resting on them. You've also got handy flip-up Isofix anchor cover so you won't lose those when you decide to fit a baby seat in the car, which I would have to. And now I'm doing all the looking about myself and Jack's going around the corners. It's like he's getting his revenge because I'm starting to feel sick. I think electric cars are slightly more sickness inducing because they're just silent. And you get that sudden surge of acceleration. Anyway, I'm going to continue. So this car's got climate control in the back and two USB-C ports for charging phones. Decent sized door bins and quality back here is actually pretty good. Click up there if you want to see a full in-depth video review of the Tesla Model 3. Oh. Jack and I have decided to pull over at the side of the road to try and let the sickness pass. So if you see some cars going past, that's why. Anyway, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to talk you through the interior of this new i4. And it has a very similar feel to a normal 4 Series. The design is slightly different. It's not quite as showy as an Audi or a Mercedes, but the quality 
is better and it has a sporty feel so being a bmw sit nice and low steering wheels in the perfect position obviously there's plenty of adjustment in it as well and in the seating position which you can get high if you need it to be however you've also got blue on the steering wheel more blue here you've got blue stitching blue on the gear selector and a blue stop start button which signifies this car is indeed electric you're also separated from your front passenger by this large center console here which is nice and this car is the m50 so you do have sporty upgrades like these m seat belts and the m steering wheel thing that stands out though this huge screen and it's curved and the detail on them is incredible it's as good as my phone and it's super responsive as well runs bmw's latest iDrive. now there's lots you can do with it there's loads of different features apps and menus and blah 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 which will probably take an age to learn one thing they have definitely improved is the digital driver's display. The layout's sort of the same as before, but there's way more information on it. So you can scroll through different views. You can display various types of information that you want. I much prefer it. It's still not my favorite system, but I like it much more than the system that I have in my M3. However, there's one thing I prefer in the M3, and it's the physical climate control buttons. They're now just on the screen there like that. Not ideal, but still better than that weird slidey thing you have in Volkswagen's latest cars, which quite frankly is shit. There's also voice commands. Do they work? Hey BMW, set temperature to 25 degrees. Hey BMW, set temperature to 25 degrees. I found several destinations. Which one shall I select? They still need to do some work on that, I think. Brilliant. Anyway, let's talk about storage because that's embarrassing. So you've got some storage under here, USB-C. You have some storage under here with your cup holders, big wireless charging pad where you can fit your Galaxy Fold. Hashtag no ad. There's also a decent sized glove box there. There's a big door bin, you fit a bottle in there, a um, BMW launch lanyard there, and then some things that you need to carry in a car for German regulations. It's all good, all practical, all fairly nice. Good news, Jack and I aren't feeling quite so sick anymore. The bad news is we've encountered a twisty road, so I'm compelled to do my job and test this car's handling, so we might start feeling sick again very soon. The first thing to notice is the steering. It's precise, it puts the car exactly where you want it to go, but there's not much feel through the wheel. Hmm. The next thing is the performance. <laughs> the response you get from the dual motors is incredible. It really rockets you out the corners. And because you've got four wheel drive grip, even though it's fairly slippery, it's doing a decent job of putting the power down. Though eventually, oh, the tires do start to break traction. You get the stability control just raining in the power. Whoa, <laughs> I tell you what's good. It really does stay nice and flat when you're going around the bend. So that's impressive. But you do notice when you start going really quickly into a corner, maybe a little bit too quick, you start to see that this car is quite heavy. It disguises its weight really well most of the time, but then when you're really pushing it hard, it just doesn't have the outright agility of something like an M3 or even an M340 i So it's fun for an electric car, but not as fun as a proper petrol M car. One of the great things about the i4 is that, look, it is a hatchback. So the boot capacity is 470 litres, which is pretty large. It may be 10 litres less than the BMW 3 Series, but the hatchback tailgate really does improve the practicality. And it's quite easy to load, look. So I've got a, a selection of stuff that I can illustrate that with. So the load lip isn't too big, so it's easy to lift heavy things like our camera case out and Jack's tatty rucksack and my posh rucksack, Burberry. Hashtag no ad again. Oh, look, we've got a number. <laughs> you don't know about that. You've got some hooks to hang things off. You've got a 12 volt socket. There's places to store stuff in those nets. There's no room under there really, apart from for your charging cables, which is okay. If you need to fold down the seats, unfortunately you do have to bugger it, go around. But like First time I've done that. <laughs> you can just about reach it from here if you want to. And look there, there's your space. In fact, I'm gonna do the lot so you can see what it's like with the seats folded out. It's harder to do it this way around. Ugh. See, relatively flat, low bed. 
very, very practical. The usable battery capacity on the BMW i4 M50 is 80 kilowatt hours. And it's gonna take you 13 hours to charge it using a basic seven kilowatt wall charger at home. However, if you can use a DC charger, if you charge it at 50 kilowatts, you can go from 10% to 80% full in 71 minutes. And if you find a 150 kilowatt charger, you can charge it the same in just 30 minutes. Find yourself a 150 kilowatt charger, all right? I've decided to leave the sweeping country roads because they're as smooth as a baby's bottom. And I want to see what this car's like when you drive it on some porous surfaces. And I found some in this residential area. So I'm going to put the car's systems into comfort mode. And that's slackened off the suspension. Now this M50 has actually stiffer suspension than the standard i4. You've got stiff springs at the front and you've got air suspension at the back. But in comfort mode, even though this is a sporty model, it deals with bumps really well. I'm actually seeking out poor surfaces and manhole covers and stuff like that to drive over. And even then, this car is not phased. It is comfortable. And when you have it in comfort mode, the steering goes lighter, so it's easier to do necessary manoeuvres when you're reaching a dead end like this. You go around mini roundabouts and, uh, yeah, go back on yourself. Hmm. Embarrassing. I hope no one's watching me. They probably think I'm casing the joint. Anyhow, I'm going to put this car into B mode and then you get extra regenerative braking. So when you lift off the accelerator, the car slows even more than normal. In fact, you can drive it on one pedal alone because you can bring it to a complete stop by lifting off the accelerator. I'll show you now. So I'm doing 30 kilometers an hour, lifting off and you can see how quickly I come to a halt. Easy, and I can drive away again. Hmm. If there is one minor complaint I have about this car, it's the forward visibility. You see, the bonnet is really quite high and long. So if you want something where you can get a better view forwards, you probably want to check out an electric SUV. And I've picked one of my favorite ones up there. So if you click on that pop out banner, you can check out what it is. There's also a link in the description. OK, I'm finally arriving at my destination. Look, there's all the BMW guys here. So I've been driving for 185 kilometers. I've got 37% of the battery remaining, which means if I do the maths, a full battery should take me 293 miles based on how I've been driving, which is way off what BMW claims. They'll have been driving quickly on the Autobahn, launching the car and hooning it up the mountain. Now what I want to do is see what happens when I launch it from 0 to 60 miles an hour with battery only at 37%. Will I get a slower time? Will it reduce the power and how much by? I just need to find a straight road where I can launch the car around here, but I think I've planned this rather badly because I'm looking at the map here and um, it's all a bunch of twisty roads because surprise, surprise, that's how the roads are in the Alps. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. This wasn't supposed to be clickbait. I really wanted to do it. I just haven't thought this through particularly well at all. I'd have to drive another 200 kilometers that way, and I don't think I've got the range for that anymore. Sorry. So then what's my final verdict on the new BMW i4 M50? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the i4 M50. It's a really nice electric car that does so many things very well and it's fun to drive. Just not quite as fun as an internal combustion engine car. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know in the comments whether you agree with my final verdict. If you click on those windows there, you can watch some more videos. And if you click on that box there, you can get a special prize. It's not a special prize, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. Click. <laughs>